Hey there guys, welcome to Tech Tickle. Today's episode is going to be my first ever build log. I've got a system over there. It's currently loading up some games and some synthetic benchmarks for testing purposes. And here's how this is gonna go. Step one, I'm gonna tell you what's in it and what I paid for every component. We're gonna get a total. We're gonna get a total where I don't hit my pop filter. And we're gonna take that total and we're gonna put it against how it performs and come up with a price performance metric. And that price performance metric is going to sit in a spreadsheet with all my other bills. And at year's end, we will crown a champion in terms of price performance. Now, to keep things fair, I'm going to have different performance classes. I'm obviously not going to put something with like a GTX 670 or Radeon 7150 versus something that's a little bit lower end, like a GTX 570. I'm going to try to separate them into groups where I can keep the settings for all the games constant throughout. Um... Uh, and that's something I'm going to have to address in the next hour or so before I decide how to do this. But the long and the short of it is, is that I'm going to have some numbers for you, including the dollar value of what this thing cost me, which I think will impress you. And um, you can decide for yourself whether or not building an entire computer out of used components is worthwhile. <laughs> All right. So let's get things rolling with the part list. What makes this motherfucker tick? First things first, motherboard. Intel DQ67SW. Obviously, it is not a retail board. It is an OEM board, and it came out of a no-name pre-built of some kind that also had an Intel i5-2400 in it. So I kept the two of those together, yanked them out of that system, and used them as the foundation for this build. How I do teardowns cost-wise, so I basically take the whole price of the thing, which in this case was $150 for the entire unit, which included uh, four gigabytes of RAM, a hard drive of some size, I can't remember, the power supply that came out of this slim form factor case, and there you have it. Uh, so I factored the motherboard at a value of 40 bucks and the CPU at 80, which left 30 for the bits of RAM and, and the hard drive that I got out of that system, which I think is fair. I think it was a 500 gigabyte hard drive. So 30 bucks for a 500 gig hard drive and two sticks of two gigabyte RAM seems to be pretty reasonable. So these factored in at 120 seems to be a pretty fair assessment. Two, four gigabyte sticks of G-Skill DDR3-1600 for seven dollars a piece. Now, how did I manage that? Well, again, from a teardown. So I don't remember the exact system this came from, but I suspect it was the one that I got out of that teenager's bedroom who had the mechanical keyboard I mentioned in a previous video. Anyway, I got his stuff for pretty cheap, and RAM I already have a ton of, so I always assigned at a relatively low value when breaking things up. I already profited off of the rest of his stuff. Um, made more than my money back on, on the i5-3570K that was in there and the Z77 board he had and so on and so on. So, 14 bucks of RAM. And at most, for the record, I mean, if I look at my spreadsheet here, the most I ever pay for RAM, a 4 gigabyte stick of DDR3 of, of a random speed and CAS latency, about 15 bucks. So you, you can easily get an 8 gigabyte kick for $30 yeah, here in Toronto, no problem. That's Canadian dollars. Hard drive. Seagate, 7200 RPM, Barracuda, 750 gigabyte. What did I get this for? Nothing. How did I get it for nothing? From a teardown. So I bought a whole system that was, uh, I think, for $50, and this hard drive was included among it. The hard drive was the newest part of this build. It, it had an Athlon X264 4400 Plus in it and an AM2 board or something like that. I took advantage of that. It was relatively new. It was a replacement drive for this unit that had been popped in uh, after the original drive had failed. And um, I already sold the rest of that build for more than $50 I paid. Uh, the motherboard and CPU alone went for $50, and I got some DDR2 RAM out of it still sitting on my shelf. So um, the hard drive, yeah, what can I say? It didn't cost me anything. You know what? Just for the sake of argument, I'm going to put I'm gonna put 10 bucks on my spreadsheet that I didn't actually spend. Just, think, just considering you probably can't do the same, 10 bucks. Zotac GTX 670, which I've talked a lot about. The two gigabyte version and i paid a premium for it uh, for what it is 120 bucks so that is about the most that i will ever pay for a 670 i might go 130 depending on a few factors it might actually still be under warranty considering how old 
It is, this one is not, but uh, given the fact that I needed a graphics card to finish off this build, I just went for it. See Sonic 430 watt power supply for 30 bucks. Now, it's a little bit more than I usually like to pay for power supplies of that wattage, but it's Seasonic. Sonic. It was in really good shape. Uh, it tested well, so I figured it was a pretty good bet. And for those of you wondering if a Seasonic 430 watt power supply is enough to power a GTX 670 and an i5-2400 in this build, yes. My god, yes. People grossly, grossly overestimate their power requirements. If you have a good unit capable of delivering enough amperage on all the major rails, you will be fine with a 100 watt buffer. No problem. And this system under maximum load draws like 330 from the wall. So after that comes to the power supply at 82-ish uh, uh, percent efficiency, you're talking about a 270 watt or so, something like that, DC draw from the unit. The Zion X310, $27 on Amazon and at Newegg from time to time. If you have will call pickup in a Newegg center near you, go get it. Um, it's a great buy. For $27, you get a micro ATX case that's fully featured. Uh, it's got a, enough space for one 3.5 inch drive, one 2.5 inch drive, full size power supply, full size graphics card. It's actually smaller than every other micro ATX case I've seen outside of that Nova that was had its name changed recently. Uh, you small form factor enthusiasts will know what I'm talking about. But um, it's nice and tiny. Single 120 intake on the front and a single 92 millimeter uh, exhaust on the back. Plenty enough to keep the whole thing cool. Again, put it up on the board, 27 bucks. Last but not least, the i5-2400 was getting a little hot. So I put a Hyper TX3 on it, which is not an unreasonable expense for the build. It was 15 bucks. And that brings our grand total for this whole build to 336 Canadian dollars. Yeah. We're gonna cut. I'm going to run my benchmarks and then we're going to come back and see how it all panned out and give you a nice price performance dollar figure. Oh baby, it's time for some sexy smooth jazz benchmarks. Start things off with Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor on the high preset. 75 average frames per second, 51 minimum, and a 108 maximum. Perfectly sexily playable frame rates. Go kill yourself some orcs. On to Bioshock Infinite. Saving time traveling ladies all over the place. Ultra DDOF preset. Average FPS of 78. Minimum of 24, maximum of 221. Thief, old and mediocre. Don't even bother playing it. Average frames per second of 67 on the normal preset with a minimum of 41 and a maximum of 92. Tomb Raider 2013. Oh baby, Lara Croft gives us a 60 frames per second average on the ultimate preset with a 42 minimum and a 74 maximum. Lastly, we got our synthetic benchmark Unigen Heaven 4 on high with everything else off. Gives us an average of 71 frames per second with a maximum of 157 and a minimum of nine. But don't pay any attention to that nine. That's probably just a scene change. Fuck scene changes, y'all. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching me be silly. And before you leave it in the comments, let me just address a few questions preemptively. Number one, why the old games? That's what I fucking have, okay? I don't, I'm not, hardware Canucks money here. I'm just me, one guy. I have a large Steam library, but I don't really play modern stuff, to be honest. So that's like the newest I had. Secondly, Windows 10? <laughs> well, um, I'm going to assume that you're an honest law-abiding citizen and that you purchased an OEM copy 
legitimately from a third-party seller. That's about as gray as I can possibly get. And I'm going to actually add that to the total of 336 for my FPS per dollar calculations, which brings us to 376 for the whole system and a drum roll of $5.40, which is not bad at all. Pretty good. Uh, historically, if I'm looking back at my spreadsheets from the past, builds that have already long since been sold, I've done much better in the past. Um, but this will have to do as a starter for 2016, and we will progress. We will trek on. In fact, I'm going to be filming one just now. I'm going to quit this fucking shit, edit it, throw it up, and then I'm going to be doing another one that's a little smaller. It's got an R9-270 in it and a Phenom-2-965 Black Edition, and we're going to put that fucker to the test and see how it does. With the same presets, too. So, see how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching my first build vlog as I am tentatively calling them, and I will see you in the next one.